And, and one thing that I want our team to know, and I stated to them, is that um, we're not going to cure our ills in one or a couple of good days or a good plan or a good performance for that matter. Um, the state that we're in, man, we're going to have to put our heads down and, and work hard and diligently and stay together uh, for an extended period of time uh, as we grind our way back uh, to respectability, if you will. And, and so I just think it's a mindset that we all need to have understanding where we are. Um, they're not quick fixes. Um, it's not going to be based on one good performance or one good plan. And I just think as we prepare and lean in for this next opportunity that we just say that. Uh, that we're going to be working our tails off. Uh, we didn't dig ourselves into this circumstance in one day, uh, so we're not going to dig ourselves out of this circumstance in one day or one performance. Now just getting back to how I normally open is talking about the performance on Sunday. Like I mentioned, um, post-game, uh, we got handled. Um, and, and I think you got to acknowledge that. Um, and looking at the tape, I don't think it was any better than how it felt on Sunday, to be quite honest with you. Um, it's probably easier to to point to the things that, that kind of happened positively, to be quite honest with you, in the game, as opposed to talking about the myriad of things um, that didn't go well. And so I've spent some time analyzing some of that. Maybe it is a catalyst to build, uh, but it's just not a lot of it. And I think that's just kind of representative of what type of day it was um, in all three phases. Had a little positivity in the special teams game from a field positioning standpoint. The kickoff team had them on the long field once. The punt team had them on the long field once. Um, but we weren't able to support that and keep them on the long field. Um, I thought the defense stood up in a sudden change circumstance when we didn't feel the, um, the, the, the kickoff return. But again, I think we had a three and out after that, so we weren't able to build upon that. Um, I was generally pleased with our ability to protect Kenny uh, in game circumstances with the quality of rushers that they had. And, and how one-dimensional we were coupled with environment, if you want to point to good things from an offensive perspective. But again, that's reaching. Largely, um, we, we were a disaster kind of in all three phases, and we have to own that, starting with myself, and I do. Um, and equally as important, uh, we got to build a plan in which to move forward. Like I also mentioned after the game, um, you know, all, all things are on the table when you perform like that. and and and. I wasn't just talking tongue in cheek. I mean it. I just think when you when you're up against it, man, you you gotta you gotta really look at all components of what it is that you do, um, not for the sake of changing, but for the for the for change for the better. And so, you know, we've been looking at a lot of what we do, leaning in on this next performance, trying to highlight what it is that we do well, what it is that we understand, uh, highlight skill sets of individuals, and so forth, and that will continue. Um, we haven't done enough in in situational play. Um, we hadn't complimented ourselves. We hadn't done enough in terms of splash and situational play. Um, that third play of the game, man, we got them third and long backed up, uh, and, they, and they complete a 98-yard ball. That's catastrophic. Um, you can't have that, but we did. Um, and so we got work to do in terms of keeping a lid on it um, and, and, and taking advantage of advantageous uh, situations or circumstance. Um, we had the ball down in the red zone some. Uh, we didn't punch it in on offense. Uh, we lost possession downs uh, in those weighty moments. I thought we moved the ball some in, in the open grass territory, but when it got thick, we weren't able to perform. And, and so we got some room for growth there. I thought um, our specialists didn't handle the environment or the conditions very well. We missed a couple uh, field goals, makeable field goals, and, and our punting was spotty. And so um, when, when, it's, when it's that bad across the board, um, it starts with me. Um, we don't need to seek comfort uh, because, you know, there's enough blame to go around. Uh, we need to be solution-oriented. Um, and so, so we begin this process. Um, again, when you're coming off a performance like that as I transition into Tampa, obviously we respect those guys. There's a lot of things to be concerned about regarding those guys and formulation of plans, dividing the labor up, et cetera. But, again, the emphasis um, and, and, and the energy needs to be geared toward us uh, reflective of what it is that we do, um, even as I talk about some of the things that Tampa does. From Tampa's perspective, man, they got an awesome defense, man. They got quality guys uh, on all three levels. Um, Edge Rush, Tryon, and, and Shaq are, are talented. Shaq's been around, got a proven resume. Um, Blue-collar dude is, is really scientific in his rush and his, 
good technically. Tryon is a talented young guy that appears to be emerging. They got Vita Vey inside. Um, he requires four hands on him. When you don't have four hands on him uh, in the run or the pass, um, you're dealing with situations there. And so, you know, he provides value and they do a nice job of utilizing his skill set, um, not only in rundowns, but in passing downs. Oftentimes, you'll see unique packages utilizing him as a pass rusher because he's such a power player. Uh, the linebackers, uh, much the same. Levante David's been down there for over a decade now. 1,000-plus career tackle guy, green dot all circumstances, um, really good player for a long time. And, and Devin White, uh, what can you say about Devin White that hadn't been said? Man, this guy has lit it up since he's coming to the National Football League. Um, he's sideline to sideline. He's good versus the run, the pass. He's a quality blitzer. He beats backs in one-on-one -on -one circumstances. And so we got to do a really good job of minimizing, minimizing those guys. They're capable runners. They can go over the top of blocks. They can foot fake and go underneath blocks. Uh, they're challenging because they're capable of doing things unconventional in that way. Um, in the secondary, um, versatility and ball skills kind of prevail. Um, they got long corners, six-foot corners, and a bunch of versatility there. Guys can play on the line of scrimmage. They can play off. Uh, they high point the ball well. They do a good job of keeping the lid on it. And at the safety position, Antoine Winfield is just, you know, a versatile Swiss Army knife. He really allows them to be multiple and, and make them challenging to deal with um, from a game planning perspective. Last week, for example, um, you know, they stayed base defense uh, versus three wide out personnel groups. He's capable of covering your third wide receiver because he's also their nickel. Um, and so from a personnel perspective, they, they can stay in base when you go sub. Uh, they can match you with sub. Um, he's a capable blitzer. He's a capable man coverage guy. He can play down in and around the line of scrimmage. He's also good on the back end and deep middle. Um, he's doing the same things that he did at the University of Minnesota, to be quite honest with you. Um, I don't get a chance to study them um, very often uh, for obvious reasons, but just looking at his play and, and how dynamic he is, he's doing similar things. Uh, that he did at University of Minnesota in that last year where he was highly decorated and made so many plays for that outstanding team he was on. On offense, um, you know, I could talk about Tom. I'll get to Tom, but let's, let's start with Fournette. Um, he, he's an all-situations runner. Um, his pad level is power. Um, his ability to finish things when he gets on the second and third level um, is challenging. Um, we got some injuries in the secondary, obviously, and so we got to be – cautious about the things that we ask our guys to do. Uh, we got to be careful of Mike Evans-like matchups, and, 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 and they got quality other receivers, obviously. Um, but Evans, particularly in situations, red zone and things of that nature, uh, big-time one-on-one matchup guy. Um, Tom is at control of it all. He, he distributes the ball. He makes good and timely decisions. Um, he's an ageless wonder in terms of uh, the things that he's able to do physically. Uh, but that's obviously been well-documented. Um, needs no endorsement from me. Um, they're collective. They manage the game. They complement um, each other very well in the phases, offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, they're able to win close games because of it. Um, so, boy, we got a lot of work ahead of us. But again, um, respect the Bucks, what they're capable of. Obviously, we got a lot of work in terms of getting to know them and familiarizing ourselves um, for this opportunity. But again, as I mentioned, and I mentioned repeatedly, um, it, it's, it's man versus itself when you're in the state that we're in. Um, you simplify. Uh, you don't make things complex. Um, you ride with the concepts that you can execute regardless of circumstance. You highlight the players that can perform well in those circumstances, and you work to minimize uh, the negative components, components of it, and you, and you keep your mouth shut, and you put your head down and work and wait for your next opportunity, and that's not coming for us until Sunday. Um, from a health standpoint, um, got some injuries to manage and so forth. Again, as I mentioned, uh, some of them in the secondary. Um, Sutton is out with a hamstring. Man, we'll see where that leads us from a participation standpoint. Um, Maker's managing the knee. Um, Levi Wallace has got a concussion. Um, he's in the protocol. Obviously, Witherspoon is still working the hamstring that, that caused him to miss several, um, several games. Ogunjobi has a back that caused him to not finish the game. Fryer Muth is in the, in the protocol. Um, Gentry is still managing um, his knee. And um, Mon, uh, Adams has got a hip, 
Um, Mon Adams has got a hip. Um, many of these will be management, if you will, and we'll let their participation be our guide in terms of availability. But in situations such as the secondary, when it's, when it's several guys, then obviously we're going to have some, some backups that we have an opportunity to get ready to play. Um, we got days to prepare. Um, we're not going to seek comfort in that component of it. When you have an opportunity uh, to put together a plan based on known circumstances, there are no excuses in our business at this level. Um, I'm excited about putting together a plan under those circumstances and, and utilizing the talents of the guys that we have available. And, and, and so we roll our sleeves up and go to work. Oftentimes we say in the National Football League, man, uh, there's not a lot of difference between the starter and a non-starter other than opportunity. And sometimes when attrition happens the way that attrition has happened uh, with us, particularly at, at the secondary position here uh, of late, it provides opportunity for guys to make that real. Cliches are cool, um, but guys through their efforts and playmaking, they make cliches real. And, 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 and things that we live by, such as the standard is the standard, has been made real over the years by guys stepping up in, in similar adverse circumstances. And so with that in mind, we roll our sleeves up and get back to work this week. I'll pause and open it up for questions. Mike, you said that Cam Sutton is out with a hammy. Is he out for now or out for the game? He's out for now. We'll let his availability or lack thereof kind of be our guide. He's kind of in the same spot that he was in a week ago. Um, and then it got to a certain point in the game where he couldn't finish anymore. Let's see where this week leads us um, from a health standpoint in that regard. Mike, you get very involved with the defense, obviously. Do you ever consider or feel the need to get involved with the offense, or especially now maybe to get things going? No, I'm not running and hiding. I'm, I'm highly involved with the offense as well and have been. Mike, what about uh, Terrell Edwards? Still in concussion protocol? He is, um, but um, I don't have definitive results, but it looks like he's moving toward the end of that, uh, being that he was in it a week ago. Did anything change with the league's new rules on that for you guys? No, no. In terms of our protocol? Uh, in terms of how things work on game day. No, no. Mike, when you said that you spoke post-game about making changes and that you were meaning to do that, does that involve changing play calling or changing coaching staff personnel starters? What, what kind of tangible changes can you make? Uh, again, post-game, I'm just acknowledging, given what transpired in that stadium, that I am open to it, and I remain open to it. But I don't intend to change for the sake of changing, to shoot a hostage, if you will, or anything of that nature. Um, if changes produce better outcomes or seemingly produce better outcomes, or we feel like it puts us in position to produce better outcomes, then I'm open to it, certainly. Mike, after having the benefit of watching the film, what stuck out to you about the way that Kenny performed in any areas you'd like to see him continue to grow? You know, I just I liked a lot of what he did, um, but but we lost and lost definitively, and 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 so um, I don't know that we're seeking comfort in that regard. If, I know that you guys have a lot of questions regarding his growth and development. I thought he was competitive. I thought he communicated well. I thought he made good and timely decisions. Um, nothing disappointing in terms of what we saw from him. Uh, we just need more of it. We got to get better. We have to get collectively better, and he's a component of that. Mike, you, you talked about not shooting the hostage, but I mean, since Matt took over last year, the numbers have been lackluster and they've regressed even off of last year. I mean, what's your level of confidence in his ability to game plan and put you guys in the end zone? I'm confident, but confidence means very little. Um, it's what's on tape. Um, and, and so we understand that. We understand the nature of your questioning. Um, I, that's just where I'm at with it right now. I'm not changing for the sake of changing. I'm changing if I th feel like it produces a better desired outcome in any area. And so... We're looking at those things, we're open to those things, but, but not in an effort to, to quell the masses or anything of that nature. Mike, to this point, why isn't Najee produced like he did last year? And is the injury at all a part of his? He missed some time in team development, and that may be a component of him finding or, or not finding rhythm. Um, but probably it's just reflective of kind of where, where we are. You know, um, it's tough to, to analyze individual components of something when things um, unfolded, particularly last Sunday, the way that they unfolded from a collective perspective. Mike, what can you do to get him um, uh, more involved where he needs to be? Would you consider playing Jalen more? You know, we've been playing Jalen increasingly anyway, and I think that's going to continue. I think he's proven that um, he's a capable varsity player, and we need plays from all parties involved. And so um, that has transpired and will continue to transpire. I think if you talk about touches and rhythm and things of that nature, 
you win weighty downs, you win possession downs, and that allows you to possess the ball and to continue to snap it, and, and that creates more opportunity for everyone, whether it's the run game, whether it's targets from a receiving standpoint, whether it's running back rhythm, uh, whether it's things that supplement core plays, play action, et cetera. Um, the, the winning of possession downs aids all of those discussions because it produces more downs. Kenny said that he's willing to do whatever it takes to win. In his first year as a starter, what's, what can you really expect out of him? I expect him to do exactly just that, uh, to do what's required to win and put us in position to win. Uh, that's why we're playing him at quarterback. Mike, uh, Arthur Millett seemed to be upset after the game, maybe about the demeanor of some of his teammates on the sidelines late in the game. From you, I know you're busy coaching the game, but did you get any reports from any of your staff about what they saw on the sidelines? Like hey, when you're getting smashed like that, emotions and, and pissed offness and all of that is a component of it. You're naive if you think that it's not. Um, we don't like getting smashed. We don't like getting beat. We're getting smashed. So all of those things are normal, if you will, expressions of frustrations, uh, the questioning of desire and things of that nature. That's what competitors do, particularly when you get smashed. I'm not going to read too much into it. We got smashed last Sunday. We'll roll our sleeves up and go back to work and understand that, man, that was not fun and we got to do things uh, differently. A couple of your uh, offensive players used the word rhythm as well when talking about the possession downs, um, not just third, but some of the fourth down ones you had. Is that also the case when it comes to rhythm, getting into the red zone and having success in that regard? Where do you see the big I think the, I think, I think the possession down plays that I was referring to specifically as I talked about them were double situational plays. Um, fourth and six in the red zone, uh, for example. Uh, third and ten in the red zone. And so oftentimes the most weighty plays are not just possession downs, but they're also red zone plays, and, and that's what makes them obviously uh, weighty. Mike, you've talked about your team needing to shut out the noise, but when former players are questioning desire and effort, how much weight should the current team put in those criticisms? I have no idea what you're referring to. Ryan Clark said that he felt like there wasn't the same amount of effort from this team. Ryan is paid for commentary, and so um, I understand that, and I think our guys understand that. I mean, he's on ESPN every single day, and so it's his job to talk about what transpired, and we realize – how poorly we played on Sunday. And so we don't dispute anything that, a, that somebody says from a commentary perspective or, or, or dig too much into it and things of that nature. Man, we got so much to work on in terms of what's going on in here and in and, and preparation for our next opportunity. Um, that's irrelevant. Can make some of that noise also people calling uh, this team potentially the worst in the league right now. What's your response to that? Man, like, I'm, I'm not seeking comfort. You know, based on our last performance, certainly. Um, we'll keep rolling that ball out. I think you said um, the secondary being decimated by injuries. Um, will you put more pressure on the defensive front to put more pressure on the quarterback, whoever it is, so that it will lessen the pressure on a young and injured secondary? Yeah, but we had some guys missing up front. Larry O wasn't able to finish the game, for example. We had some attrition in that space as well. And so, you know, we'll, we'll make decisions. And, and oftentimes, where we place pressure in terms of delivering plays are circumstantial. In some instances, in running circumstances, you, you place pressure on the secondaries, you load the box. In other instances, in passing circumstances, you place the pressure on the front. And so I think that that's just a common component. There are multiple variables. All those conversations are always complex ones, ones that we're definitely willing to have, and appropriately so, given the state of some of the availability. Um, it's, it's a coach's challenge, and it's something that I, I'm excited about uh, generally. You said um, we didn't dig ourselves into this in one day. We're not going to dig ourselves out of it in one day. As part of getting out of it and staying out of it, knowing when and how you did dig yourself in, have you guys acknowledged or understood? It's about, it's about the development of players and concepts, and, and, and that's what it's about. Our, our windshield is bigger than our rear view. We can waste a lot of time talking about things that have transpired. We, we talk about this collection of young guys that we have that are playing in some instances and how we could highlight what it is that they do well and, and stimulate and, and accelerate their growth and development and minimize some of the things that they don't do well and, and, and find our personality in that way. Um, those are some of the things that have our attention as we sit here formulate the plan for the next opportunity. Mike, your, your only hit on, uh, on, on Josh Allen in the backfield came from Minka Fitzpatrick Blitz. How much of what your defensive front, I know you talked about attrition, but how much of what your defensive front has to improve in pass rushes is winning one-on-ones versus scheming up better opportunities for your guys? 
you know, it, it's, it's, again, multi-variables. Um, you know, it's more than just beating people. Um, when you're playing a guy with, with Josh Allen's mobility, quarterback mobility is a factor. And so smaller people, athletes, become a component of the rush. You mentioned Minka, for an example, game plan related things. And so there were things that transpired in, in stadium on Sunday that were components of game plan related things that are less significant as we prepare for our next outing. Where is Wednesday at physically? It's to be determined. Um, you know, he's scheduled to work some this week, and we'll let that work be our guide in terms of his availability. Mike, with uh, what happened to Sims over the, before the game, how do you plan to handle the return? Um, we expect him to be healthy, and if healthy, he's going to be our return man. Cam mentioned on Sunday owning up to this stuff. You mentioned that today. Are you seeing guys that need to be owning up to things at this point? No, but we better state the obvious um, because guys like myself and Cam been in negative circumstances before, and we understand potentially what's capable under those circumstances, and that's why we say what it is we say. Mike, when you look back to the tape on Sunday, was the effort level, I think after the game you said you were fine with the ex effort level, the execution was an issue. Are you still looking back? Does that, does that track? And then if, I, if, they're, if they were trying that hard. I'm not going to pretend like there wasn't disappointment and, and expressions of frustration and disappointment in play, particularly at the end of the game. Um, but I don't see it as problematic. I see the execution or lack thereof or, or the quality planning as the core issues and problems. And so um, I'm not going to get carried away with, with that component of it, although I know when you get smashed the way that we do, oftentimes that's you know, low-hanging fruit from a father's standpoint. Um, not my concern. Like when you're in a situation like this, you have a lot of guys on your team who are used to winning. Um, how do you prevent the natural human emotion to kind of allow that to fester and frustration and instead Remain resilient. I think that's kind of what we've been touching on in a myriad of ways, what she was referring to when she asked about what Cam said and why I said what I said. Um, you, you continually um, educate and train young people about the nature of professional sports and the challenges, not only inside the white lines, but leading up in preparation for and some of the things that come with. And, and so um, that's the job of guys like myself. That's the job of veteran teammates and and we don't run away from that. We run to that. Um, you know, when it's miserable, it is a great opportunity to educate. Um, and, and so we, we embrace that. Like you acknowledge after the game that Kenny's in a really tough situation, stepping in to be a starter and a leader in this. What, what from, that you have seen from him tells you that he's ready to lead at this specific time? Like I've mentioned repeatedly when asked about Kenny, I think since the time we stepped in the per first preseason stadium, I've seen nothing but a rapid ascend in – and, and his capabilities, his professionalism, his mindset, um, what he brings to us. And I just think it's reasonable to expect that to continue regardless of, you know, how rough the waters are. Can he be a, a focal point for the rest of the offense to kind of rally around? Seemingly so, certainly. Um, I think that's why we, we put him in at the position, certainly. Any Mike? updates or progression on TJ? None. None today. Mike, you did not actually talk about Tom Brady in your open there before you moved on. I mean, because what has it been said about Tom Brady? <laughs> Let me help then. <laughs> what do you see at 45? Does he look any different than at 35? Is Tampa doing anything differently with him than, they, than what they did to him? No. Um, there, I don't see any limits in his play from a schematic standpoint. Um, I, the same things that, that made him special at, at 35, I see at 45. Um, highly competitive very good mechanically, field vision, ball placement, um, competitive, um, you know, can break the game down into a tight space or see the broad picture as well, um, inclusive in terms of his utilization of eligibles. I mean, it's, um, you know, pick an, another time in the last 15, 16 years we played Tom and, 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 and produced one of those quotes that nothing much has changed. You do have increased success at getting to the quarterback this week. Is there anything, suggestions, tutoring, whatever, teaching that you can give your defensive guys about uh, how to avoid the flags that were thrown this week? Uh, I, I'm not highly concerned about that discussion in reaction to what transpired or has transpired recently. That's part of team building for us. Uh, we understand the initiative that is player safety, and particularly at the quarterback position. And so if you're not coaching defensive line in that spirit, um, you're not upholding your end of the bargain as a coach. We talk about that continually from day zero of team development, about how to uh, appropriately 
uh, combat that position um, in competition. Mike, uh, what did you either see at the time or in retrospect about Byron Leftwich that has made him, you put him on a fast track here as an offense? <laughs> you know, um, I was talking to somebody about it the other day. Um, you know when a guy has an aptitude to, to coach, um, when, you, when you coach them. And I'll just say this, I'm not surprised at all. Um, he was always a global perspective dude. He could see from outside the helmet. He was a great idea guy. Uh, he was a natural leader and communicator. Um, but I could say the same thing about a lot of formless Steelers. I say the same thing about Larry Foote. He's working on the other side of the ball. Um, Deshae Townsend, um, who's, who's carving out a nice niche for himself in this game. Nick Easton is a D-line coach um, at Clemson. It's been a pleasure to be associated with some of these guys and be a component of their story. Um, as they transition into coaching and, and chase their, their professional goals in that area. Um, I'm honored to be associated with them, and, and it's good for the game. Um, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the quality of men that those guys are, um, Byron and, and Larry, and, and forget their expertise. They're just quality football people. And it's just good for the game to have people that love the game and, and are as passionate about the game as they are involved in the game. Absolutely. A couple more. Mike, I know that you know, the part of the problem with Kenny Pickett in this on Sunday was the game getting away from you guys and putting him in that situation. But what are things that you guys can do to, I guess, better set him up to have more consistent, successful drives based off of what you saw when he was able to put together something? And, and again, you said it. We, we got we to gotta keep games closer, man. When you're in games, you have everything on the menu at your disposal. Um, when you're not in games, you get somewhat one-dimensional. You get more predictable. Play pass is less effective, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, it, it's a global thing, and uh, we understand that. Um, not to make it an insurmountable obstacle, I'm not suggesting that. Um, it's very, we're very capable of, of correcting the things that, that are issues for us, but um, there's a lot of variables at play when you're talking about the question that you, you outlined. One more. With the concerns about um, all the concussion protocols right now specifically, how concerned are you moving forward with Pat and Levi? I got a great deal of confidence in our medical experts. Man, I didn't go to med school. I don't make decisions. Um, I hear from them, and, and, and their expertise is our guide. All right. Thanks. Thank you.